Coming up now, the National Finals Rodeo here in Los Angeles is saddle bronc riding, and this is one of two events in which the national title is still on the line coming down to this final night of competition, right, Lance? The two boys battling it out here are Marty Wood of Bonass, Alberta, Canada, and Jim Tesher of Medora, North Dakota. Both of them uh, well familiar to Wide World of Sport viewers. They've won a lot of these big rodeos. That's right. Marty Wood leads. He was ahead when the final started. He's been working ever since the first night with a foot badly hurt. He has to freeze it with Novocaine every night to get on his horses. Jim Tesher has won about $700 more than Marty in the go-around money here, and they are sitting real close to one another in second and in third place in the total markings here. So again, right down to the wire. Right. And again, let's take a look at slow motion of this event, saddle bronc riding. Very much like the bareback, slightly different spurring motion, but the cowboy is marked on the same general aspects of his ride. Get in the rhythm of that horse, that's the secret. Here's some of the men. This is Marty Wood from Alberta, Canada. A lot of Canadian riders here in the national finals. Here's Jim Tesher of Medora, North Dakota. And another Canadian coming up, Kenny McLean from British Columbia, Okanagan Falls in Canada. They start in slow motion once again, and here we go with the competition. Remember, the title is still on the line. Ty Frost of the Point, Utah, on trade wins. Clyde Frost, one of the real good pros in rodeo, enters this and the bareback riding. And it's been a rough finals for him. He looks pretty groggy there, uh, Lex. What he hurt, his arm or shoulder, is it? Probably his shoulder. Oh, boy, that's tough. Alvin, there's Alvin Nelson of Sydney, Montana, on Red Pepper, an appropriate name, I'm sure. Pettig horse here from North Dakota and a North Dakota cowboy. Alvin came from Sentinel View, just a little ways from where this horse's home ranch is. Nelson has won the saddle bronc riding at the finals twice before. He's a tough man to get on the ground. There's the nose of that horse, Red Pepper. Well, our wow. camera in the box over there got a good view of that. The horse bucked right into it, mashed the limbs back into the cameraman. That horse, Red Pepper, is a camera hog. That's what he is. Okay, the score for Alvin Nelson, 63, gives him a grand total of 447 for the national finals. Now we're going to Bill Martinelli of Oakdale, California. He can take the lead with a score of 66. John Doe, the name of the horse, owned by Joe Kelsey, comes from Washington. In the saddle bronc riding, as in the other riding events, each of the two judges score the horse or the animal I should say between 1 and 25 points for how hard the thing is to ride they score the rider between 1 and 25 for how well he does Martinelli score a big goose egg didn't make the necessary number of seconds on the back of that horse here's Curly Hebb of Fall River Kansas the horse's name, that's all. How about this, Lex? Would you describe that a little bit? Well, they ride with a braided rope rein on one side of the horse. Curly Hebb, a right-handed rider. Most cowboys ride with their left hand. He also uses a glove. Move him, we're to go. Move Most saddle bronc riders don't use a glove. The rein is all important on a horse. If they measure it too long, give the horse too much rein, they won't have anything to balance on as the house horse lunges forward. They took, take it too short, they'll get jerked out over the horse's head. The only way they know how to take the rein is to ask another cowboy. One of the men entered against them. Great tribute to the sportsmanship of rodeo pros that this information is never withheld or wrongly given. <laughs> That horse on his knees in that other chute, and so we're going to move down to George Williams of Greeley, Colorado, on Whizbang. 
one of Andy Aragi's horses here from right out at the edge of Los Angeles, New Hall. George Williams in 10th place for the championship this year. Well, he made the required time before he hit that dirt. George Williams walks back, note the cast on his arm. He broke that arm, oh, better than three months ago. He's been riding all the latter part of the season with a cast on it. A tough cowboy who gets a score of 52. Okay, then we'll be back in just a minute at the National Finals Rodeo in Los Angeles. Ball carried by number 33, Petrosante. Nick Petrosanti, Detroit Lion fullback, starts to pick up the pieces after a rough game. Vitalis helps. Keeps his hair neat and natural like all day without grease. Uh-oh, greasy kid stuff. Creams and oils use grease to keep hair in place. It can't look natural, but it can with Vitalis because Vitalis and only Vitalis has V7. 100% greaseless V7. Nick's hair looks great, natural-like, and Vitalis doesn't pile up on his comb. Vitalis keeps hair neat all day without grease. Prevents dryness, too. A good-looking cowboy. A picture of the West, isn't it? Ronnie Raymond of Paulino, Oregon, on Rocky Ryle, and there's the horse. Hey, Dennis, push your head out. That one beady eye, balefully yep. glaring out. Oh, oh, oh. Got to look like a camel on that poor shortening of the lens. Rock. See that rain up Rock. there where it won't crowd on the man's throat as the horse turns Rock. out. Rock. Put his head up, get it! Or does he? Rocky Ryle was ridden by Ronnie Raymond. A lot of R's in there, aren't they? <laughs> we get a score here in just a moment. Complex of R's, 49 the score for Ronnie Raymond on Rocky Ryle. <laughs> now quickly, let's go back to an interview before today's rodeo by Clem McSpadden with Jim Tesher. Here's Jim Tesher, and many times you think about a rodeo cowboy that should live way out in the country. How far do you live from your grocery store, Jim? 38 miles. 38 miles. Medora, North Dakota? Right. Here's a fellow that's won this event at the national finals twice, and tonight a world's championship is how far from you? Well, about $600, I suppose. Five, 600 I don't know exactly. Well, now, it's between you and Marty Wood, right? Right. What's going to happen to uh, have to happen for you to win it? Well, I think he's going to have to make the next move. I believe he's going to have to fall off or disqualify for me to win it now. Well, it couldn't happen uh, to two nicer people or two people with any greater ability, Jim, than you and Marty. We'll Thank be you. looking for you and Marty for great action this evening, okay? Thank you. And maybe you can get to the grocery store on time next time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Jim Tesher, one of Rodeo's great saddle bronc riders. Coming up now, Winston Bruce from Cochran, oh. Alberta, Canada yeah. on Calcimine. Well, a Canadian horse here. Another Canadian cowboy. You know, Canadians sort of specialize in this saddle bronc riding the way they do in ice hockey, at least in West Canada. Any particular reason for that, Lex? There's a lot of big, rough horses still in that country, but it's just their favorite event there. Winston was the world champion bronc rider in 1961. He was crippled here earlier at the finals, had to turn two horses out with a shoulder separation. Wrapped it up, he's riding again. Moving in now after the whistle, it's too late to say Winston Bruce. The two pickup men, Lefty Wilkins and Bob Yoke. 
And there's Winston Bruce, who got the job done on this horse, but waiting for a score, which is 56. A good score for him. Now here's a rider who is in contention for the championship of the national finals, Enoch Walker of Cody, Wyoming. He needs to score 47 to take the lead at the moment. And he has ridden the horse Wanda D. The question now is the score. If he gets a score of 47 or better, he'll be the momentary at least leader. Score of 69. Very good score. And Enoch Walker has taken the lead. Now again, let's meet another of these cowboys a little more closely by going back to an interview that Clem McSpadden had with Marty Wood of Canada. In this arena just a year ago, Marty Woods, former world champion bronc rider of Bonassa, Alberta, saw his world championship last year slip away from him on the final horse. And Marty, this is kind of like a Hollywood script rider. Same deal, isn't it? Just about the same thing, yep. Well, actually, if you ride the horse tonight and mark on him, is it all over? No, uh, I've got to place pretty good on him. And I've got to try to win third in the average and try to place the go-around before it's uh, really decided. So it's right up to the last one again. Well, Marty, this is like uh, not only winning the pennant on the last day of the season, but kind of winning it uh, with two out in the ninth inning, isn't it? That's for sure. Well, we'll be watching for you. and. Uh, Wish you the very best of luck tonight, Marty. Maybe another world's championship going back to Canada. Thank you, Tim. Okay. Thank you. Marty Wood, former world's champion, could win it again this year. Another of the great names in rodeo coming up, Kenny McLean of Okanagan Falls, British Columbia, Canada. This time he has drawn a horse named Red Wing. And, of course, these horses are drawn by lot always. Yes, the horses are all numbered here. The judges draw to see who gets them. This is a horse from the Calgary Stampede. Seems our Canadian boys are drawing Canadian horses tonight. McLean was a world champion in 62. Okay, well, Kenny needs a score of 58 or better to take the lead. Actually, 59 to take the lead, 58 with time. That score will be coming up. 62, Kenny McLean has taken the lead by three points at the moment. There he is. Now we're going to Curly Hebb of Fall River, Kansas, who has been awarded a re-ride. This time his horse is called Funeral Wagon. <laughs> Charming. <laughs> On the horse now, Curly Hep. Curly's here in the new number three for this horse. Hep was here in 1962, also qualified by Jerry Winston. See if he can get this one out of here. Double with the last horse. That's why he got this re-ride. They aren't glad to see the big up man. I'll bet they are. Standing by for Curly Hebb's score. He is not in contention for the overall lead at the national finals, but he gets a score of 55, a good one. The next rider here, Jim Tesher of Medora, North Dakota, needs an extremely good score to take the lead. He needs a score of 72. That would really be up there. Well, 100 is a theoretic, theoretical perfect score, and no one comes close to it. If anybody might get way up there, it'd be Jim Tesher and the combination of the Canadian horse from Red Kessler Spring, Hatrack. Hatrack is the horse, Jim Tesher the cowboy. Remember our championship race here. Jim Tesher right behind Marty Wood, $619. <laughs> Now stand by for the score for Jim Tesher because as Lex indicated, he is st still in contention for the world championship for the year here. And this ride could do it for him. 
Also, as far as the national finals rodeo is concerned, he needed to score 72. He got 58, however. He is not going to win the competition here at the national finals, but he could still win the world championship. We'll have to do a little arithmetic on that to figure, but a lot of it depends on what our next man does, Marty Wood. And now here we go with Marty Wood of Bounus, Alberta, Canada. Looking at the horse, and here comes Marty, who would like to be the world champion, and we'll know in a matter of just a very few seconds. For seven horses, Marty Wood has been freezing his foot with Novocaine, crawling down in these bucking horses, trying to stave off Jim Tesher's bid for the title. One more time. Come on, come on, come on. Doesn't look like there's much question about it there, Lex. Both our judges, Sonny Terman, Bill Williams, are marking their books. That indicates that Marty has qualified. If he beats Tesher tonight. 62, there's the new world champion. Is that right, Lex? That's right. Jim Tesher marked 58, Marty Wood 62. Marty Wood of Canada, the new world champion in that event. We'll be back at the National Finals Rodeo in just a minute. Project 1370, world famous York Research Corporation, where men test the electronic gear that goes into space, test machines and materials for shock, heat, cold, altitude. To York Laboratory came Project 1370. Measure the amount of wear that can be saved by adding Bardol to conventional motor oils. Day after day for six months, Independent York engineers put all types of automobile oils to a most precise friction test. Oils with Bardol, oils without Bardol. The results are in the Reader's Digest. Bardol can save up to 400 miles of engine wear every 1,000 miles you drive. Bardol will make your car run better, last longer. Add Bardol every oil change. Watch the Nobel Prize Award show tonight on ABC. National Finals winner again, Kenny McLean. Two years in a row, Kenny. No, thank you. Uh, you've won all the big ones, and this is the first one you've won twice in a row here, I think, right? No, this is the first time I've won this. You won it, sec I guess, one second place two years ago. Yeah. Well, congratulations for wonderful rides on eight horses. And let's turn now to the world's champ, Marty Woods. Marty, last year you lost the world's championship on the last horse, and this year you won it on the last horse, right? That's right, yeah. And you've had a bad foot all week that was injured on your first one? Yeah, at uh, my rewrite on my first horse, went into the gate and twisted his back. Got a couple of friends here that have been really taking care of me, the doctor and the fellow's been taking it every night. Well, they, they took real good care of you, Marty, and congratulations. But you really, as the Cowboys say, charged this last horse. You're a great champion. Now to you, Jim McKay, across the way. <laughs> 